Hi, Timothy Unger here. In this video, we're going to start to use Emacs. Emacs is a very extensible text editor and integrated development environment you can use for coding, writing, or many other things. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on the web saying that Emacs is very hard to use. I would disagree. You can get started with it fairly easily. It is complicated, but to do simple text editing, it's pretty easy to get started. Okay, so this is what Emacs looks like when we fire it up. It doesn't look that nice, but we can quickly change that. Although if we want to just maximize Emacs like that, we can press this button just like any other program to maximize it. We can go here and visit a new file that's opening a file, and we can type in the file name, sample dot, let's say, txt. Hit enter, and it's going to open up a new file name. Now, if we want the font to be a little bit larger, we can go to Options here, and we can go to Set Default Font, and it starts off as Cuisine. That's fine. We can get a little bit larger. For this video, I'm going to move it up to 16 and click Select, and now the font is a bit larger, and to begin typing in Emacs, we can just start typing. So we can, let's type this line, we can write a long line and go to the beginning of the line with control uh, A, with just control and A. So if I do control A, it gets me to the start of the line. Now, to go to the end of the line, we can do control E. So to get to the end of the line, we can do control E. Okay, so control A gets me to the start of the line. Control E gets me to the end of the line. So that's a nice keyboard shortcut. And you do want to learn some of the keyboard shortcuts in Emacs as it will be more efficient for your text editing. OK. Uh, we can go down and just to hit Enter and go down, we can create another line. To move up, we can use Control P. And we want to think the previous line. Okay, so to move up, I can do control P and move up the lines. Now to move down, I can do control N. So to move down a line, we can use control N. Okay, so, uh, you know, control P to go up, control N to go down if we want to think the next line. Okay, to save, uh, we can, we could use the menu, but we can use control X, control S. Okay, so control X, control S, and it'll say wrote, and then the name of the file. Okay, um, <clears throat> we can access the help, so we can access help uh, with control H. Okay, so if I do control H here, it's going to, let me try that again, do control H. It's going to open up uh, a help menu here. So if I do control, uh, control H and then control A, it'll give me information about Emacs. If I do control H and then control C, it'll give me information about Emacs copying permission. Uh, if I do control H, control D, It'll give me instructions for debugging Emacs and so on and so forth. So let's do uh, let's do Control H, Control F for Emacs Fax. So I'm going to do Control H, Control F. Okay, and we've got in this bottom window we've got some of the Emacs fact, and we can go and go down with Control N, and we can actually also just scroll up and down with the mouse and click on some of these things like. Um, turning on abbreviations by default. Now, if we click on this, it goes and it gives us some helpful information. Now, we can also use the mouse to move this window up and down. Uh, we can do a command um, control X one just to get this one buffer by itself. Um, and we can go up to our menu and go back to our buffers and go back to the sample text buffer that we want. So that's how we get to the help and we find a lot of information. Uh, you can use a mouse in Emacs to move around in the current buffer. 
And um, there's some other things now we can start to customize our Emacs, customize the look of this. So one thing we can do is we can go to options and you should be in Emacs. I think you should be using the keyboard uh, combinations, the key combinations to edit your text. It's faster. Um, you do have this menu and you have the toolbar, but I typically hide them. Now, if we want to go and hide these, we can go show hide and we can go to the toolbar here and we can click none. And what we can do is we can go to the options here and click save options. Okay, we can go back and we can hide this vertical scroll bar. So if we go to options down to show hide uh, and go to scroll bar and no vertical scroll bar, we get rid of that. And we can go and save our options. We can get stuff like line numbers if we want to. Um, let's see where our, let's go to show hide and we go down to line numbers here and we can do global line numbers mode. So we can do that. Now we've got line numbers showing, which is nice. And we can save our options. Now what this is doing when you're saving options is it's creating a dot emacs file you can actually see down at the bottom here it says wrote home tunker dot emacs okay and we can access the dot emacs file directly if we go to dear ed which is the built-in directory manager in emacs or file manager if you want to think of it that way so we can get into dear ed a couple of ways we can do alt x and type dear ed or uh, i'm going to quit out of this with Control g we can also do Control X D, and that brings you to Dear Ed, and we can hit Enter. And now we can navigate through Dear Ed with Control N, Control P, or just N and P, actually. So we can go down to our .emacs file, and you'll see it created some variables here. And you see the stuff, global display line numbers mode T, scroll bar mode nil, toolbar mode nil. We can also go in and do another hyphen here and do menu bar mode a space and nil and we actually want to maybe get rid of this parentheses and put it down here and now we can do Control x Control s to save it and then alt x and we can type in eval a space and then buffer and hit enter and that gets rid of the menu bar now we if we need the menu bar to come back up, and sometimes we might want to do that, we can do Alt X and then type a command toggle menu bar mode, and you'll see it'll come back. Now, if we want to get rid of it again, we can do Alt X and toggle the menu bar mode from frame. We can hit it and it goes away. Now, the cool thing about putting this in the .emacs file is when I quit out and I restart, it's going to remember this stuff. So I can do Control X, Control S, or sorry, let me do control G to quit out of that. Control X, control S to save, control X, control C to quit. Uh, it's gonna also say that I have this sample.txt file. Do I wanna save that? I'll say yes. Okay, so now it quits out of Emacs. Now, if we fire it back up, we'll see it opens back up and we've got this larger font here. Um, but we don't have this, the frame maximized. I do like to have it maximized. We don't have our menu bar, we don't have our toolbar mode or our scroll bar mode, but we can maximize the uh, frame on startup. We can do control X D and we can go down to our dot emacs file here. And if we want to go to our internet here, we're a lot of things. If you're trying to figure them out with emacs, you can just search. So let's say maximize emacs on startup. You see, I have this nice, uh, entry here. I'll include a link to my .emacs file uh, in the description as well. I can copy this line here and I can go down to the bottom with alt shift period or basically alt shift and then the right arrow. You can go to the top with alt shift and the left arrow. I do alt shift period and then to paste that in I do control Y and that'll paste it in uh, and we can do control X, control S. And then now if we want to quit out of this, we do control X, control C to quit. Now, if we restart this, 
Uh, that didn't work. Let's see what happened here. So let's do Control X D and go to our dot Emacs uh, set Q. Oh, wait, I copied in the wrong thing. Sorry. Uh, let me do Control K to kill that line. If we go back to here, I want to do Control C like normal to copy and then Control Y to paste. Do Control X, Control S. We'll quit out again. And if I open this back up, Okay, now it maximizes on start. The next thing I want to do is get rid of this welcome message. You may want to run through this Emacs tutorial, although if you follow my videos, I think you'll get a good idea of Emacs. Uh, read the Emacs manual. You can do all this stuff if you want. You could leave this uh, startup message here if you want. I personally don't like it. And through this tutorial, I won't be uh, starting up my Emacs with it. So let's disable the startup message. So I'm just going to Google this in Emacs here. A lot of times if you want to uh, figure out what to do, so we get Stack Overflow, unable to hide welcome screen in Emacs. I want to hide that. I just want the scratch buffer when I start up Emacs. Okay. So here we've got an answer, set Q inhibit startup screen with the T, and we're going to put that in our .emacs file. So I'm going to just copy this. And we're going to do Control XD to get to the dear ed and go down to our dot emacs. By the way, if you're wondering what this dot emacs with the little tilde afterward is, that is a backup file that emacs creates by default. You can turn it off to not do that uh, if you don't want that clutter. Um, I leave it on though. A backup file is nice. Uh, okay, so we can go to the bottom of the file again. Alt Shift period goes to the bottom. Alt Shift comma goes to the top. Okay, so let's go Alt Shift period to go to the bottom, and let's do Control Y and paste that in, and then Control X, Control S to save it, and then Control X, Control C to quit. Okay, so now when I start up the Emacs, it's maximized, it's got the font that I want, and uh, it doesn't have the startup message. It has this scratch buffer here where you can just start typing. It's not going to be... Um, it's not any particular file. It's just something to start typing on. I kind of like it to start up like that. Now, to change the look of Emacs, you can also customize themes. And you can do that by Alt-X and then Customize Themes here. And you've got a bunch of different themes. Let's say you want to go in and do Mysterioso. You can click on that and then click Save Theme Settings. And now if I do Control-X, Control-C to quit, and I start back up, you see I've got this new theme, and I can do this full screen. It looks pretty nice. Now, let's say that I wanted to get a different theme. There's tons of different themes that are online, and one of the nicest themes out there is the material theme for Emacs. So I'm just going to Google material Emacs here, and I'll come up with this Emacs material theme. And you can do material light, material dark. Now, I may not use this theme totally for my tutorial. It depends on how it comes out for the video. Uh, I may use a lighter theme. It depends on what records better. But uh, let's take this material theme.el. So I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to click on the raw version here. And we see if we can get this file here. Uh, it's MIT license. I'm going to right click and click Save As. Now you want to save this in your .emacs.d. So that's going to be in my hidden files here. So I'm going to go to my .emacs.d, click on that. Uh, and then I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it themes. And then within the themes folder, I'm going to save it, but I'm going to get rid of the .txt extension. Okay. And I'm going to hit enter. Okay. All right. Uh, so now we'll go back to Emacs. Now it's not automatically going to show up. What I have to do is go back to my .emacs file. So I'm going to go back down to my .emacs file here. I'm going to go back down to the bottom, and I have to write two lines to get it to start up with the material. So the first line, I'm going to start with the parentheses, and I'm going to go add 
hyphen to hyphen list space, uh, a single quote here, and then custom theme. These are all separated by hyphens, by the way. Load path, another space, and then within double quotes, uh, we'll first do the uh, tilde sign to get to our home directory. This is going to be in the .emacs.d folder. And then within that, it's going to be within the themes folder. So we're telling Emacs where to look for this theme. Okay. And then to load the material theme, I'm going to do load hyphen theme in parentheses, a space, single quote, material, the name of the theme, another space, and T. Because if I don't put the T, it's going to ask me if it's safe to load the theme every single time I do it. Um, I'm going to do control X, control S to save. And then I'm going to do uh, control X, control C. We're going to quit out of there. And we're going to start back up Emacs. And you'll see now that we have the material theme, which is a little bit different than the Mysterioso theme. I, you know, I like it. It's fairly nice. Now, if you want to find a lot of these themes, um, you can just search Emacs popular themes here. And you can do go to the pop, popular Emacs themes charts. A lot of these will work using the method I showed you. Some of them will not. Some you need to install via Melpa, which is a package man management system in Emacs. That's later on in the tutorial. Um, but you can fool around and look through this list and, and find a bunch that will work um, with the method I just showed you. So you can find a theme that you really like. Uh, I think that's enough for this video. It's a lot of information to digest. Uh, but if I were you, I'd go over the, some of the stuff that I covered in the video, start editing some text, use Control N, Control P, Control A, Control E to move around the file, and uh, just get used to editing a little bit. Emacs, maybe set it up the way you like it. Maybe you like it with the toolbar showing. Um, it's up to you. The great thing about Emacs is it's uh, very customizable, so you can get it to look however you want and you can edit text very quickly. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.